what's this another laser ah you bet this one's from MacPow, and it's an enclosed laser i believe it's going to be a class one i haven't looked at it yet i haven't done anything with it yet uh, what's the difference between a class one laser and a class four laser class four laser is open open frame you see me do a lot of videos with them uh, you generally need to wear eye protection at all times with uh class one laser it's totally enclosed and if you open the lid it shuts off and i assume that's what we have here i've got a we create upstairs in the loft and also have a x2 less one up there so i'm going to get this thing opened up see what we got i do need to point out that MacPow did send this to me to uh, test and demonstrate uh, that's just being up front about that right off here um, i have done other reviews on uh, MacPow lasers and they are good machines i've not had any problems with them so we got a big sheet of foam here and i see some assembly is going to be required the entire enclosure is in here but it's not all folded together so there's going to be some assembly oh let me see what we got here Have more foam here. The uh, laser itself appears to be pretty much completely put together. There's a blower fan here. A bunch of little pieces of foam. We have an air pump for air assist. Power supply. Power cable. Some uh, safety glasses I don't see them. they look like they're green and then the head okay how many watts we got here 22 watts 22 watt output and then we got a whole bunch of bags of hardware and stuff here a USB cable a micro SD card and a reader we have a little brush a Phillips screwdriver USB cable vent hose and some materials to play with and then we have a manual on the bottom and then nestled down here in the bottom another piece of foam that's taped that's got some uh, acrylic in it for the rest of the enclosure and then we have the laser itself Got a removable bottom pan. I had to make sure it wasn't going to slide out on me. Okay, get rid of some trash here. Here's a whole ton of little screws in here. So if you've got one of these uh, parts trays, magnetic parts trays, it's a good. This would be a good place to use it. You don't necessarily have to have one that's divided like this. The first step is going to be to be putting these uh, enclosure supports in. So I'm going to get those out of the bag here. Then all these screws I'm going to dump into this little magnetic tray here, so I can access them easy. And they, I'll just set that in the bottom of the laser here, so I be within easy reach. So what do we start out with here? Let's go in the four corners, like so. Um, I'm gonna get you in close to show you something here. You liable to mess this up. Black on black is always fun. These uh, corner pieces, you'll see you got two recesses in here. That will be up. Then you see you have two holes on the sides. That is will enable you to mount the uh, side pieces as they go. So you don't want to put it on upside down. Okay, the two that have the uh, little plates on the front screwed on, they go on the front. The front is facing me, so they would also face the front. So they'll go like this, and these screws will drop down through. Help if I had a screwdriver handy. So the two with the little screw plate go on the front, and the ones without the plate will go on the back. And there you will want these screws on the long flat side 
to be facing the back. I should say facing well, those mount this way back there. They need to face out. So they'll mount like so. These will mount like this. And you need to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, next are the left and right protective covers and they are marked L for left which goes over yonder over there and then R for right and there's protective film on these you'll need to peel off which sometimes is a pain, no this comes off pretty easy so these will set on here with some little slots in the sides you line up and then you've got two screws to put in back there and two screws to put in back there Snug the screws, but don't over tighten them or you'll crack that acrylic. I have not done that here, but I know that's what will happen because I have done things like that in the past. Okay, put the front screws in before the back ones. We'll leave the back ones loose. There's slots back there, but there's no slots in the front. You need to have a little bit of wiggle room here to get the front ones lined up. Then we can tighten the back ones. And you need to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, next is the exhaust fan, and I have this sitting up on its side. They tell you to make sure that the uh, cable here points to the left, which, because I've got this setting up right, I'm going to have that pointing up. So the fan goes on the inside, and then the port goes on the outside, and then we have some hardware to hold that in there. which look to be little wing nuts. And there's four of these to do. Wing nuts, I mean, not four fans. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit since I'm up focused close on this. Um, this is your exhaust tubing. It expands. You can pull it out. It's uh, kind of an odd size for what I have here, but I can adapt it. And then they give you a uh, a clamp to put around it. So this would slip over that. You put the clamp on it. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm just going to have my shop door open and let it blow out the front door. But I just thought I'd jump ahead a little bit since we were right here on that item. Okay, I'm going to peel the rest of the protective film off of this. So now we put the back on it. See there's some tabs right down here. There's slots in the back of this where those tabs will line up into and there are notches on each side and there's a protrusion, a tab that sticks up from the sides and we've got screws to put in here, here, there and down here on the corner, back corner over there same thing on the sides over there so you don't need to wash you put screws in but that's where all of them go Way back here in this uh, left hand corner at the back is a jack where you would plug in the fan. It's impossible to show on a camera really, but there, you'll see it right there and it's marked. It says exhaust fan power. And that's where that will plug in. And this uh, here for the LED light, this will eventually route itself up and get plugged in right here with some little cable things, but we're not to that quite yet. Next, they want you to put on the laser head. So I'll get that pulled up here where we can see it. I just love doing these when they're black on black. There's two thumb screws on the side of the dovetail part here where the laser head slides and you just back those out a little bit. And then this will just slip right down in there. And I'm just going to set that at a random spot for now. And you will have a cable here and a hose. Hose just simply plugs into that port right there. And the cable is keyed, and we want the red wire facing to the front, and there we are. And they give you some cable clips here, uh, has, uh, we call them sticky backs, 
uh, you peel the film off the back and you'll stick them on this rail right here and you have this uh, LED cable which I need to get the tie off of so we can route that up to the front where it plugs in straighten out a little bit there's a little jack right up here in the front corner where this plugs in and then you can set your cable clips in there accordingly make sure your surface is clean of course first and the cable will just clip in there and so on down the line okay time for the front cover so I'll get the protective film peeled off over here I've got two hinges to flip up and six screws to put in I'd suggest you not tighten them all the way down until you have all of them started just in case there's any kind of alignment issue you may need to do a little wiggling well everything lined up On the left front corner up here is the uh, jack for your Wi-Fi antenna, should you desire to use Wi-Fi. It just simply screws on like so. There's also a switch over here for your LED and where your air pump plugs in and your air pump hose and etc. Okay, since I'm going to be turning this 90 degrees so I can work on it from the front, um, air hose plugs into the front of the air pump. Again, the air pump plugs in right here. Because it's going to be turned, it's going to be out of camera view, but it's a pretty simple process. I'll give you a little uh, micro USB driver, or I should say micro card, TF card, micro SD card, whatever you want to call it. Comes with a card here, 8 megabyte card, 8 gigabyte card rather. So I'm going to see what's on this before I put it in the machine. There's a slot there for it. We'll take a peek here and see what's on it. Okay, there are some uh, practice files you can do on there. A cat and a rabbit. It's got an operational video. A driver is in here. And the user manual. And it's got the CH341 driver. I already have it installed on my computer. I don't need to do it again. But if it's new to you, you need to do that. And the MKS laser tool. I am going to be using uh, light burn. So I'll get this powered up and get it connected to the computer. I'll put that micro SD card in the laser so I'll, that way I know where it is. Oh, they also give you a bunch of images you can play with. We might play with some of those. So the micro SD card just goes in the slot right here next to your USB port. I don't know which side's going to be up. There we go. I'll get my USB cable. We'll get connected. Okay, there's a security lock on the front where you can, in case you've got kids or whatever, that you want to keep them out because they can't mess with it. You can turn that on. I didn't expect power to come on. You turn that on and then if you want to protect it when the kids mess with it or anything, turn it off, take the key out. And it comes with another key so you can put that somewhere where you'll forget where it is. Okay, I got light burn open here, so I need to uh, choose my laser here. So I'll go to devices and find my laser. Oh, I need to turn the laser on first. Make sure you do that. Make sure the emergency stop is not pressed in. The key is on. Okay, find my laser. right there. Okay, I need dimensions of my work area. So, I went to the next screen which is Auto Home's the front left and we want it to Auto Home on Startup. We hit Next and I have named it my MacPow X4. Finish. So, okay. And it is homing. And incidentally, if you leave the cover up very long, it'll start beeping at you. That's why I closed the cover. That got annoying. This has a tray in the front of it that slides out, like so. 
you can put in your layout grid or your honeycomb board or whatever you're going to be using. I'm wondering what these are. These are hold down clips if you've got something that's going to like blow around or move. You can put these on the corners and hold it down and they get flush enough that the laser head does not hit it. I don't need those in there right now. What I'm going to do. So then you can just close the drawer. Okay, to set your focus, you've got a little kickstand right here. Black on black, this is hard to show, but you just flip that down and you loosen your thumb screws up. I have mine focused now. And adjust this to where your kickstand just touches the material. Tighten the thumb screws back down. Make sure you remember to raise that back up. I have this set to do this uh, little cat real quick. Uh, one thing you cannot do is frame your project with the lid open. I don't like that. I like to be able to frame with the where I have access in case I need to move my workpiece a little bit. But that does not work here. So that's one thing I do not like. Uh, the good point is you open that cover the laser stops. I mean just right now. Okay I have framed this and it, like you say with, I don't have a layout grid in here yet so it's hard to have an exact position. But I just got a little piece of MDF in there. We're going to do this little cat silhouette on it. I'm using Air Assist here, and the Air, the Air Assist pump did come on on its own when this uh, process started. And the exhaust fan also came on as the process started, and it's blowing the smoke out the back. Well, here's our little cat. A little bit of soot on there, not bad. That was at uh, 8,000 millimeters per minute of 70% power, just in case you were wondering. Next little example here, I've got a piece of 8 inch plywood in there, just a scrap. We're going to cut out the uh, same shape, but we're going to do it as a uh, line, like a, instead of the fill, so it'll cut it out. And I already have it framed, so let's let it cut here. Running at uh, 750 millimeters per minute, 100% power, 8th inch plywood. So, yes, it works. Did a little silhouette of the cat. I did a just a line thing of the cat. And then as the last one you saw there, I actually cut one out. And as you can see, there's no scorching on either side. So it, it came out really nice. Uh, that's all I'm going to go through on this one here so this doesn't get to be excessively long. There's going to be some more videos coming up. I need to cover up on uh, some adjustments and settings. A, uh, maybe set up on Wi-Fi. I'll show you how to do that. There's a camera in here and I've got to get that connected to your computer. You can show that in your software. And it looks like you might be able to operate this offline. I haven't looked into it that far yet, but it has controls on the front here for moving X and Y axis, home, frame, start, stop. So that's indicating to me there may be a way to uh, run a file off a SD card. Don't know yet. Got to do some more investigating. Again, this is the MechPow X4 Pro. It's a class one totally enclosed laser. Uh, it works. It's the, the only thing I really don't like is when I'm framing something, I like to have access so that if I need to move my piece a little bit, I can do that. I can't do it with this one because as soon as you open that lid, it shuts off. That's a good thing when the laser's running. But I wish they had a workaround here so that I could do it when I'm just framing. Otherwise, though, I'm perfectly happy with it. Assembly wasn't too bad. If you happen to be going to use a rotary at some point, it does have these little legs that well, would screw onto the sides and raise it up. You would then pull the pan out to uh, use a rotary underneath it. However, then it's not technically a class 4 or a class 1. It becomes kind of a class 4 because the bottom's wide open. But kind of a moot point, but you're still protected at the top. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate you getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. Be a link in the description of where to get one of these from MechPow. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.